Hello, uh, my name is Gonzalo Sapisochin. I'm one of the parabiliary and transplant surgeons at the University uh, Health Network in Toronto. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation and the organizers for inviting me to participate in this great uh, uh, workshop on, on uh, Hyler Colangio Carcinoma unraveling a difficult diagnosis. And I'm going to try and focus in the next minutes on talking a little bit about the management of perihilar cholangio carcinoma in terms of surgical resection or transplant. And I'm sure we're going to have a bit of a discussion at the end uh, with all of the panelists uh, of this uh, excellent uh, uh, symposium. So liver resection for perihilar cholangio carcinoma is the first treatment option. This is a very, you know, it's a high morbidity and mortality operation that in general is done in high specialized centers for that reason. The five-year overall survival after perihelic cholangiocarcinoma resection is around 30 to 45 percent. And the main problem after this uh, operation is that the risk of re recurrence is around 80 percent in the first two years. I'm going to show you a, a small video uh, that explains why the surgery of uh, perihilar cholangiocarcinoma is so complex. And, you know, as you most of you know, uh, this is the anatomy of the liver. And as you can see, you can see the baldac, the hepatic artery, and the portal vein. You know, these tumors grow in the bifurcation of the uh, baldacs. Here are also the hepatic veins. And the problem is that in that area, there's a lot of vital structures that as surgeons, we need to preserve resect and manage in a way that, you know, the remnant liver uh, can be functional. In general, and because the left duct is longer than the right duct, what we tend to do for clad skin tumors, if they're resectable, is to do an extended or a right hepatectomy. And then we reconstruct the uh, bile duct uh, flow with an hepaticojejunostomy as it's illustrated in this video. Obviously, that's the standard uh, perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. Things are obviously more complex. And as you can see in the next uh, uh, short video, there are certain criteria of unresectability. One is when these tumors grow kind of to the dome of the liver and they're invading the cava and the hepatic veins. And then we may need to uh, expand the resection with vascular resections. And also when these tumors actually grow downstream into the common bile duct, hepatic artery or the portal vein. And again, in some of these cases, we need to do vascular resections. So what are what defines resectability? Because that's the big question on, in, in perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. And there's going to be hepatic issues. So the liver that's left behind must have obviously an adequate inflow of arterial and portal vein inflow, adequate outflow through the hepatic veins, an adequate functional liver. And this obviously varies if the patient has some cirrhosis, if the patient has PSC, uh, if the remnant liver is drained, etc. And then obviously there's oncological issues. If we can do an R0 versus we can do an R0 resection, if there's vascular involvement, as I mentioned, and then how far the biliary involvement is, and if there's nodal invasion, and in general, uh, as I will explain in a minute, uh, we generally remove these nodes. This is the standard surgical resection per for hyalur cholangiocarcinoma that includes a major hepatectomy, usually three more or more segments, plus the cauded lobe, plus the complete bile duct resection. And in general, we do a portal lymphanectomy. And the extent of that lymphanectomy is something that we can discuss. And then we we'll reconstruct, as I mentioned, with an hepatic jejunostomy. So then the, the, the next question becomes, what about those patients that have unresectable perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, and if liver transplant is a good treatment option for those patients. And obviously, this can be unresectable due to location or due to underlying disease. And this is always when these tumors are confined to the liver or to the bile duct, and there's no extra hepatic disease. This is the uh, selection criteria for liver transplantation for perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, and this is mainly from a Mayo Clinic, but this has been standardized worldwide or in the centers that are performing this, and this is our criteria also in Toronto. There has to be a malignant appearance structure, and at least one of the following, either there's positive cytology or histology for, chol for cholangiocarcinoma, and we never do uh, external biopsies, uh, percutaneous biopsies, it's always uh, with brushings or direct biopsies, not percutaneous, with usually with ERCP. The CA99 is over 130 without cholangitis. We can find that there's polysomy on fish, uh, it has to be a, a mass on cross-sectional imaging, and this mass has to be less than three centimeters. As I mentioned, there's no extrapatic disease. The cancer is located 
primarily above the cystic duct. And again, this could be unresectable in the no like the novo cholangic carcinomas in patients with healthy liver, or this is a cancer arising in the setting of PSC. The Mayo Clinic has really uh, showed us how to do this. And in their protocol, basically patients get external beam radiation plus brachytherapy. They also get neoadjuvant chemotherapy. There's an, first an EUS to sample some nodes, and we can talk about that later. There's an abdominal exploration for staging. And once we confirm that there's no exopatic disease, those nodes are not invaded and there's no disease elsewhere, then patients can be uh, transplanted. The main experience, as I mentioned, comes from Mayo Clinic. This is a slide courtesy from uh, Dr. Julie Hainbach from uh, Mayo uh, Clinic. They have an amazing experience with over 350 patients already. As you can see, some progress before getting the chemo radiation. Some we find that are positive at the time of the staging hepatic, uh, laparoscopy. And we've seen that in our own series. Some nodes are positive or there can be peritoneal implants. And finally, they've transplanted over 200 patients. This is their experience in terms of outcomes. I think the outcomes in their series are remarkable. The five year survival in patients with PSC is over 76%, and the 10 year survival is 70% in those with de novo cancers. The five year survival is around 60%, and the 10 year survival is around 50%. So, in summary, perihilar cholangic carcinoma is a very difficult tumor to treat surgically, and it definitely needs some specialized uh, cancer centers. The problem after surgery is the high recurrence rate and something we can discuss is what is the um, impact of adjuvant therapy? Should we be treating these patients with neoadjuvant therapy also for um, before surgery? And then I think that liver transplantation is a good treatment option for these patients when they're not resectable. The question becomes what is resectable and what is not resectable? And then the next question is, should we be doing transplants in resectable patients? The problem always comes with liver transplantation is the organ availability, and should we be doing these transplants with living donors, which I think may represent a good option in this setting. I would like to thank again the organizers, and this is all my contact information.